Next we have Raj Malhotra, who's uh, one of the MGH cardiologists who spends part of his time running, uh, being the associate director of the cardiac uh, intensive care unit, where he takes care of critically ill patients, but also runs a basic program. We've heard a little bit about vascular calcification. Raj is going to tell us about some of his work looking at mechanisms and potential targets in vascular uh, uh, calcification. Raj, thanks so much. Great. Um, thank you for that introduction, Tony, and it's an absolute pleasure to be with you this morning to discuss uh, targeting vascular calcification as a way of preventing cardiovascular disease. So why is vascular calcification a clinical problem? It comes to no surprise to this audience that atherocalcific vascular disease, also known as atherosclerosis, is the largest cause of, of morbidity and mortality globally. Vascular calcification and recent data that uh, studies the molecular mechanisms of vascular calcification has reported that the calcification contributes tremendously to atherosclerotic plaque destabilization and rupture, and this can contribute to clinical events such as myocardial infarction and stroke. Vascular calcification is actually one of the strongest predictors of cardiovascular disease, and this is, includes both coronary arterial calcification and aortic calcification, where both of these measures um, predict uh, cardiovascular events independently of one another. And we've known this for over a decade. So this is a study that was published back in 2003 looking at <clears throat> your survival based on the number of coronary arteries you have calcified. And as your number of coronary arteries uh, that, are, that contain calcification increases, your cardiovascular survival plummets. And one thing that I wanted to highlight is that these, these curves start to separate early on in the time course, you know, beginning at one to two years. And so really, the presence of vascular calcification really represents an immediate threat to your cardiovascular survival. However, currently there are no treatments that specifically target vascular calcification. So I want to move on to discuss my laboratory's overall approach to identifying novel therapeutic targets of vascular calcification. And this begins with human genetic studies. So we're very interested in identifying novel targets that have relevance in human disease. And so I'll go through an example of one of our studies. Um, my laboratory, in conjunction with the Framingham Heart Study, looked at over 9,000 individuals where genotyping was available. And so we had <coughs> access to over 3 million genotypes of single nucleotide polymorphisms in these individuals. And then we acquired CAT scans of the aorta in all 9,400 individuals to quantify the degree of their aortic calcification. We then performed a genome-wide association study where we looked at the association between all of these polymorphisms and the phenotype of aortic calcification. And what we found here is, uh, this is the, the data that we obtained, and this is a Manhattan plot, which you saw earlier, uh, basically just reviewed, is that each point represents a novel polymorphism. Uh, and the y-axis represents the strength of the association of that polymorphism with the phenotype of aortic calcification. And you can see here that there were two genetic loci that were identified to be associated with, um, with aortic calcification at the genome-wide level uh, pre-specified threshold of significance. Okay. And what we found was is that not only were these associations strong um, at the genome-wide level, but when we looked at expression of mRNA markers of this, these gene targets, we found that increased expression of these gene targets was associated with increased levels of vascular calcification. Okay? So that was our first step in our goal to identify novel targets of vascular calcification. But remember, these are association studies, so you really need to go a step further and understand whether these genes truly do uh, are involved in the mechanisms of the development of vascular calcification. And so what my laboratory performed both functional and mechanistic studies. And just to give you an overview of how vascular calcification develops, at the center of the development of vascular calcification is the vascular smooth muscle cell. And the interesting thing uh, about the vascular smooth muscle cell is that it can really change its phenotype depending on the environmental triggers or exposures. And so you can have either a normal vascular smooth muscle cell that exhibits a contractile phenotype. Or that vascular smooth muscle cell can transition over to more of a bone-like cell or osteoblastic-like cell that lays down vascular calcification in the blood vessel wall. Okay? Now there are different triggers for this process, such as 
inflammation, smoking, uh, reactive oxygen stress. And so ideally you would come up with therapies that favor this type of vascular smooth muscle cell, the normal contractile smooth muscle cell, and inhibits the production of this bone-like smooth muscle cell that lays down vascular calcification and that's more proliferative. Okay. So in the lab, we've worked on developing and enhancing tools to study this process. And one of this is just a simple way of looking at vascular smooth muscle cells in particular media that gets these human smooth muscle cells to calcify in the Petri dish. And so you can see here that in control cells, these are human vascular smooth muscle cells grown in conditioned media, what you can see here is that we can get these cells to calcify and we can quantify that calcification using a particular red stain known as alizarin red. You can see that these control cells have a significant amount of vascular calcification as we were hoping for in this experiment. We took those same cells and inhibited uh, the expression of one of the genes that we identified in our human genetic study. And you can see here that we significantly inhibited the degree of vascular calcification that we saw. Okay. So the next step is that, okay, if we inhibit this gene that we identified in a human genetic study and we inhibit the calcification, the next question is, is are we then favoring the more contractile and less proliferative phenotype? And that's exactly what we observed in our subsequent series of experiments where we showed that when we inhibit this gene of interest, we inhibited proliferation of these cells by over 50 percent. And then when we looked at contractility, this is actually a very nice experiment where you grow your human, you embed your human vascular smooth muscle cells in these collagen discs. And then you release the collagen discs from the edge of the wells. And the amount of contraction of these collagen discs is directly proportional to the contractility of the vascular smooth muscle cells that are growing inside of them. And you can see here, here is that when we actually inhibit this gene of interest, we can get these co collagen discs to contract more, thus representing that we're favoring the normal, more contractile vascular smooth muscle cell phenotype. So this was very exciting data from a human genetic study. We identified a gene target that we were able to show when we inhibited the, that gene target, we could favor a contractile smooth muscle cell phenotype, inhibit vascular calcification. And so the next step was to study this in an in vivo model. And so in our laboratory, we have established uh, in vivo murine models of vascular calcification. And the way we quantify vascular calcification is by using fluorescent probes that you can inject into the organisms and quantify their degree of aortic calcification here as signaled by this red fluorescent signal. It's this fluorescent probe that binds to and directly targets the calcium phosphate crystals that are in the aortic wall. And so this is our uh, murine model of vascular calcification. And so when we created a mouse model with this gene of interest knocked out, you can see that there's a significant reduction in the aortic vascular calcification that is seen. And when you quantify that, it's about a 50% reduction in the vascular calcification. So what are the next steps? You know, of course, the next steps that we hope to uh, develop partnerships on is to develop drug to drugs that can therapeutically target this um, this, these genes of interest, and ultimately we can get to the clinical trial realm where we study these drugs in humans. And one thing I want to highlight is that oftentimes when you are trying to propose studying clinical trials and treating a disease, um, you, you know, of course you want to study the broader atherosclerotic population, but sometimes it's convenient to also identify a specific disease that is more severe and that you can study more readily. And we actually have uh, identified that disease. and. Um, and so this is known as a disease as calciphylaxis. It's an unfortunate disease that represents a severe form of vascular calcification. And it affects about 4% of the dialysis population. So it's associated with patients who have kidney failure. And unfortunately, there's a greater than 50% mortality within the first year after diagnosis of calciphylaxis, and there's no treatment for it. Now, how do these patients with calciphylaxis present? Usually they present with these necrotic, um, escar-like um, lesions of one of their extremities. And when you take a biopsy of these, uh, of these tissues, what you see here is, is that this is a blood vessel in a dermal biopsy from this patient. This is just an H&E stain looking at the blood vessel, these arterioles in the, in, the, in the dermal tissue. And when you stain for calcium using this von Kossa stain, you can see that there's a significant amount of calcium phosphate surrounding, encircling, encapsulating that blood vessel. And what that ultimately leads to is obstructive phenomena of the blood vessels, thrombosis, and that's why you develop these necrotic lesions uh, of the extremities. So it's, you know, it's clearly an unfortunate disease that has no treatment, 
Um, and we have recently published a study showing that this disease, calciphylaxis, has similar molecular mechanisms to that associated with both atherosclerotic disease and also aortic valvular disease. And so we think that it represents an ideal patient population to study as a potential proof of principle of novel therapies um, that you know, we'd like to study for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. And so bringing this uh, in full circle, you know, we've now identified you know, an initial patient population that we could study uh, for vascular calcification. And the hope is, is to develop therapeutic uh, drugs that can target vascular calcification based on evidence that started from a human genetic study, went on into functional and mechanistic studies in vitro with data that's readily available to obtain, leading to in vivo uh, assessment, and then finally drug development. And we hope to partner up, uh, you know, find partnerships of interest to study this exciting opportunity to treat vascular calcification in the downstream cardiovascular events. Thank you.